Hey guys, it's Bishop Ozzy here and welcome to episode 13 of the Local to Global series. Today's episode, we're going to continue on. We're going into June, so we're pretty much a year and six months into the Local to Global challenge so far. Essentially what that means is we're, we're sort of at the, the halfway debt point. So usually at this point in time on 2020, if you had not by the end of the month gone back into the black and erased all debt from your company, you would go bankrupt. So it's changed for TW9. You essentially have three years from the starting period to then get a, uh, a company out of debt. So what that means is we're at the halfway point here on TW9. Um, however, as you can see last episode, we clawed it back. We clawed back $523, which is more than by far more than double what we made the month previous so we're in a very good position there as far as the finances go i think you know theoretically we could even make more money had we only run one normal ticketed show but then again if we do that we we risk not gaining popularity and the reason why we're now profiting so much is because we are still gaining points of popularity so it's a very hard sort of this is why we did all those experiments in the, in the last few episodes really trying to, to get up to a good point, which I feel like we, we are now. We, we definitely are. As far as our size, we're up to 12 popularity. So, you know, it was episode 12 last episode and we, uh, we found ourselves on 12 popularity. So hopefully we can uh, continue the, the trend, hopefully, and get to 13 popularity here for episode 13 as well. That would be very, very decent. Anyway. We're going to advance into the first show here, which is going to be the climb again. Uh, the climb is, of course, our first show for the month every month uh, in the first week, essentially, as well. So looking forward to that. Like I said, this episode, well, I said last episode, that this episode, we're going to make some signings. Uh, we're going to get through this first show and then we're going to make the signings. Uh, and it should be pretty good. This guy here, though, he's come through the SWF uh, University. And he has, in, well, he's gone now, but he had incredible, incredible entertainment skills and performance skills. Holy, he was, he was something. He was something. I might look at trying to get that guy if he, um, if he leaves RIPW, which is the developmental territory there for the SWF. He could be a really, really good pickup. Anyway, Wild Red Stallion, he has uh, joined BCG at the start of June there, so one day ago. He will be one of our signings here today, so we're going to sign him after we, after we finish this first show. So, let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to do a multi-man number one contendership match for tonight. Uh, we're going to do a fatal four-way, I think. So, I'm going to need everybody. Uh, and like I said last episode, we're up to a weak economy, which is good it was red before and we're actually at a very strong wrestling industry as well so it's um it's only up and up 100 percent at the moment uh what do we got here got 95 points uh we do need another character idea because our last one was a big gamble and we're not going to use that so uh it's a surefire hit but it's only for jules knight and uh we've recently been um We've recently been pushing Jules Knight, so yeah, it's a bit of a waste. We've only got 55 points. I probably want to keep those 55 just in case. Locker room incidents. What do we got? Uh, Blue Dragon and Phil Anders having a blazing argument outside the venue. Interesting. They're both lively personalities as well. Uh, we've got some more training there for, for Jack Pride, Jerry Pepper, and Phil Anders. And here we go again. Our Mr. Al Coleman, he's... He's always one to uh, to damage a rental car, it seems. It's his uh, go-to incident, uh, refusing to pay for it. Uh, we're just going to fine him again. Um, and he's now annoyed at the fine. Interesting. Although Jack Pride is pleased. Uh, we've also got Montero and Pepper helping to create a relaxed atmosphere backstage after finding a karaoke machine. And that is it. All right, so... Not great there, not great. Um, do we have any morale issues? We can't actually go back and check. I'm gonna do some team bonding though because it seems like we probably need it. Uh, I've created new tensions 
between myself and Al Coleman. So that's an interesting one. Um, and then pretty much strengthened everything else. So it's literally me and Al Coleman sort of having a little bit of a, a little bit of tension between us, shall we say. Um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it too much. You know, he's the champion at the moment. So I've either got to take the title off him or, I mean, he's now annoyed. That's, so now he's got morale issues, does he? Let's go back and have a look. He sure does. That's, that, may, that essentially means that he's probably going to cause an incident every single event we have now, at least until I get rid of those morale issues. Very dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. Uh, number one contenders match. Let's go for Blue Dragon. Uh, we're going to go Remy Sky. Who else? Jules Knight and Roger Montero. We're going to give that 20 minutes there as well. Uh, I think, who do I want the winner to be? I think Blue Dragon at this point. Uh, and I'll make, I'll make the loser Jules, seeing as we have that character idea. We've got a surefire hit for his character. I may as well take a little bit of momentum off him because I can essentially just give it straight back to him if I need to. So it's going to work out relatively well in this scenario. Uh, so we'll go open, whoops, we'll go script, we'll go clean. And yeah, that'll be our number one contenders match. Uh, we also need to make that Al Coleman. He's gone back up to 74 psychology. Interesting. Uh, let's go with a, I think I want to go with like a four man stare down for the main event with all four competitors. So let's go Blue Dragon, uh, and that's only because Jules and Blue Dragon don't have any entertainment skills, so they can't essentially do promos and stuff like that. So we go Remy, we'll go Jules, and we'll go Roger. Uh, all four wrestlers stare each other down as the crowd goes wild. I like that. We'll, uh, we will script it as well. Uh, we might even do three angles and I'll try and do a little bit of uh, a little bit of everything. But if I can do that, we might get the, the bonus. Uh, next match is gonna be a tag team match where we're gonna be using a lot of workers today. Uh, so it's gonna be Coleman teaming up with, thinking of Jerry Pepper to take on the team of Patriot and Hangman. And then we'll give that 12 minutes. In this match, I think I want to have Hangman pin Al Coleman. So he's going to get a, a pinfall victory in a tag match against the heavyweight champion. So it's going to be nice and clean as well, uh, which might lead to a bit of a uh, bit of annoyance there from Jerry Pepper and uh, Al Coleman. Uh, Common's unhappy. Okay. Keep you strong, I guess, Al. I'm sure he's got more popularity than him. 33 pot. I mean, he's got 39 in the Southwest. So that's probably the, the reason why. But yeah, 33 pop there for him. 36 pop in the Northwest there for Texas Hangman. So he's definitely uh, the, the more popular of the two. Still only 54 psychology there for Hangman. A little, little bit unfortunate, a little bit. Uh, Rematch, let's go with a Coleman. Ooh, we'll go with a Coleman promo onto, or do I just have them both talk? I might have them both talk actually, that's probably smarter. Uh, Coleman attempts to get under the skin of Hangman. Hangman gets fired up and says he's going to destroy Coleman. The story, destroy. There we go. Uh, we'll make that an angle. Um, gonna destroy Coleman here tonight. 
Oop. There we go. All right. Uh, we don't want to improvise that. We want to script that one as well. Uh, and yes, we'll save part one. Um, what else are we going to do? I think we might just go one more match. Uh, we've only got three people left anyway. Let's go for a Patterson Jack Pride match. Uh, and I think I'll give I'll give Jack Pride the win, and we'll make it tainted. Uh, we'll work the crowd with the. Do we want to work the crowd? I might give him an angle. What angle do I give him? Hmm, I don't know. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I'll give him an angle. I'll give him an angle. So go regular. Actually, go work the crowd, and I'll give him an angle after. Let's so save that, and then I want to have another angle. So I think it'll be a two-minute angle. Uh, we'll go. Th we'll go three three minutes with it. We'll do a saving the day. So the attacker is going to be primetime Jack Pride. The victim is going to be Patterson. The cavalry is going to be American Dragon, American Patriot. Sorry, not 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 American Dragon, which is Blue Dragon and American Patriot put together. Uh, so Pride attacks Patterson post match. Patriot. Runs out to make the save. Cool. And again, that just gives us another angle. Hopefully we do get that bonus. That'd be sweet. Uh, so we'll script that one as well. Copy and paste that. That'll lead to a Patriot versus Jack Pride match for the next show. Have a nice little singles match there as well. Uh, so that'll go post-match. We're at 85. We would not be penalized. That's perfect. Uh, we pretty much nearly used everyone. I think Phil Anders is the only one that we haven't used, yeah. Um, and again, he's ice cold momentum. So maybe I should use him. And we'll just grab a local worker. So I grab Silencer again. Um... How much would Rain Man cost us? Ooh, 160. Definitely not. We've lost all the workers. We've lost all the workers in the Northwest. They've all gone somewhere else. Uh, which is really bad. I could go Warwick Good for one night. He's going to cost us 80. I could probably get that down to 70, maybe. Or I just go with the Silencer again. I might just go with the Silencer again, to be honest. Uh, so we'll get him in for 25. We'll get him in as a face as well. Hire him, and then let's just give Anders a match. We'll give him the win as well, I guess. We'll we'll keep him strong, keep Silencer strong. Uh, so Anders to win. Uh, we'll make this the work the crowd match, and I want to keep it open, script, and this. We'll go tainted, and then keep Anders simple as well. It's going to be a really bad match either way because Silencer has Ring Rust, so we may as well keep him strong as well. Why not at this point? He does actually have a little bit of popularity, so it does work out. Go back into this one, make this one regular. Perfect. All right, we are ready to go. That's actually like a, a pretty thick stacked show in relation to angles and, and matches and even back-to-back -back angles. It's going to be relatively interesting so let's run the show yeah we, we knew this one was going to be bad we get a 19 that's the first red rating in a, in a show we've had for a very very long time uh, but we have phil anders defeating the silencer in 1205 by pinfall with a handful of tights and then the match was designed to work the crowd and again unfortunately for us anders was really off his game probably would have boosted it up to a 20 at least which is a yellow rating but what can you do? Uh, and then, yeah, Silencer is still rusty with that ring rust. Needs a few more matches. Um, got very good again. So he's had that back-to-back. -back. I think we're, we're going to bring in the Silencer. It's a very marketable gimmick as well. So that would have been good uh, if we could have that pro when we actually sign him. Because um, then we can eventually, once we go up in merchandise level, we're pumping out the merchandise. So, yeah, more just a match to give Anders a bit of momentum because um, he'll cry if he doesn't get it otherwise. So yeah, 
and full of tights and his defending silencer. We then go into a 35 rated match where we have primetime Jack Pride defeating Jason Patterson in 12.06 by pinball after using a foreign object. So yeah, Jack Pride getting a steel chair, cracking Patterson with it. The referee gets back up after being hit and uh, gives Pride the 1-2-3. The Not a bad little match for these two either. 35 is about what I expect from them. So I'm happy with that. Uh, we then go into the subsequent angle, getting us a 26, where we have Jack Pride attacking Patterson post-match. And we have American Patriot running out and making the save there for Patterson. So, yeah, like I said, we'll do a little match there for Patriot versus Jack Pride on the next show. Uh, and that should be a good little singles match for Pride. We then move into a 40-rated angle from Al Coleman. He attempts to get under the skin of Texas Hangman. Uh, Hangman then gets fired up and says he's basically going to destroy Coleman here tonight in their tag team match up next. Happy with a 40. Good stuff. Both rated on entertainment as well. So we, we, we like to see that. We like to see that. Their tag team match gets us a 49. So not too bad where we have American Patriot and Texas Hangman. And they defeat Al Coleman and Jerry Pepper in 1220 when Texas Hangman pinned Al Coleman with a choke slam. So... Yeah, I guess the more experienced team getting the win over Coleman and Jerry Pepper. Jerry Pepper may be a little bit to blame, but at the end of the day, Coleman did take a clean pinfall uh, from Hangman. So, yeah, big victory there for Hangman over the current heavyweight champion, and it was clean in a tag match as well. We then move into a 33-rated stare-down angle. We have all four of our you know number one competitor, number one contender competitors standing in the ring pre-match uh, and the crowd is going absolutely wild for these four and they want to find out who's going to be the the new number one contender for later in the month against Al Coleman 33 rated it's not too bad I'm pretty happy with that and the main event is going to get us a I'm thinking a 50 50 would be decent I feel like we get a 51 just above what I expected perfect all right Got Blue Dragon pulling off what many would consider an upset, defeating Remy Sky, Jules Knight, and Roger Montero in 20 minutes, 26 seconds, when Dragon pinned Jules Knight with a Dragon Driver. Very impressive match from all these guys, actually. Got a 46 from Dragon, 48 there from Remy Sky and Jules Knight, and a 52 from Montero. He's, um, he's really become the, the, the dark horse. Sort of um, out of nowhere, he's just turned into one of our best workers. Um, I guess Jules Knight's similar, but Jules Knight's very young. He's only 25. I think Montero's about 32 at the moment. So he's he's not old by any stretch of the imagination, but he, he's definitely, you know, a senior guy that we brought in just to be an extra wrestler, really, and a, a road agent. So... Very happy with that. Uh, we get a 51 rated, you know, fatal four-way match here in the main event to finish off the climb. Uh, what do we get for the show rating? We get a 48. That's very good. Very happy with that. That's pretty consistent for these climb shows. They're, they're always getting about 45 plus. Uh, it does increase our popularity in the one region there. Uh, and yeah, if I duck my head a little bit, oh, not enough. Um, it benefits... The show benefited, so we probably got a little little bump there up to 48 from having the uh, the wide selection of angles there. So we do get that positive for three different angles. Um, we might try and make sure we do that on, on most shows. It doesn't have to be every show. I do like my promos. They The promos do seem to rate higher is what I've noticed. Um, it can be relatively difficult, especially at this low popularity that we have for our workers. Uh, especially the working the crowd sort of angle instructions, it can be quite difficult. Uh, whereas the promo ones are, are much easier and they're just rated purely on entertainment. So yeah, happy with the 48. We move on, finish the show. Let's address. Uh, so Al Coleman's going to be one of them. Uh, we're going to have to stick with him for a little while to get rid of his morale issues. Uh, and then I'm assuming, who do we go with? I think... Go with a blue dragon. Why not? We'll, we'll praise him as well. Pleased and very happy. Perfect. 
All right, financials, uh, we lost 355 as a result of that show. A bit high on the worker costs again, uh, but we can trim those down for the next show. We're probably going to have closer to, to singles matches, maybe one tag match in there. So, yeah. And as we can see there, we indeed go from 12 up to 13 popularity for the month. Episode 13 sticks with the trend. We're sticking with it. 13 popularity f 13 popularity for episode 13 is what I'm trying to say. So very good stuff there. Still progressing, which is very important for us. And we're looking good while doing it. We're, we're pulling off some really good shows, which I, I didn't really expect. I thought it was going to be a little bit harder. I think what I've, what I've noticed from playing TW9 so far is that it seems to be easier to get better ratings for these smaller type companies. But once you get higher and you get into medium, it slows down a lot and it's much harder to get higher ratings. Um, so we might have those, those issues in the future. It is what it is. We just have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, there we go. 13 pop. Uh, we've got two in the mid-south, two in the Midwest. Uh, and it looks like all these are still the same. Still got three in Alberta, three British Columbia, and then three in the Southwest as well. So yeah, happy with that. Good stuff. All right. Uh, we're going to advance forward here. Um, and we're just going to start advancing. Uh, I probably shouldn't have advanced there. I might have to pause that. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to freak out. Um, what we're going to do is... We're going to make those signings now. I, I should have done that as soon as we finish there. But the signings we're going to make. So 100%, we're going to go Wild Red Stallion. Uh, so he'll be, the, he'll be the first one in. Uh, if we go back to here. Uh, based in any. If I can go to any. Anywhere at the top. All right. So uh, Wild Red. There we go. Uh, he's currently with BCG, so a little unfortunate. Um, and he's only going to be 30, 40 per show. But he does, he, he based in Kansai, do I wait for the 2i to be over and then bring him in? It's so annoying that he's based in Kansai now. I should have signed him back in the day. Oh, it's very, very frustrating. Mm, do we do we do it? I think what I want to do is I'm going to bring the silencer in. He's already got the popularity here, 16. He's actually lost two points, which is maybe a little bit silly of us, but let's bring silencer in. Um, I'll try and get him a little bit lower as well. We'll go 25. Not covered, which is perfect. Gonna get that a little bit lower. Uh, everything except house shows. That's another or another little tip from you guys in the comment section down below. If you want to reduce their costs a little bit. You can do everything except house shows, um, and that'll prevent them. But it, it'll slow, slightly lower their demands, um, and it literally doesn't affect anything for you guys, um, unless you, you know, you're a, a medium-sized company actually running house shows. So it's sort of a win-win. And there we go, $25, 5% 5 merchandise as well. So if we, we do get that, that pro for his gimmick, then we're gonna be looking pretty good. He does have an intense personality though. That's another bad sort of personality that we, we've got to keep an eye on. Uh, we'll try and keep him, I guess, happy as, as much as we possibly can. So yeah. Uh, Vendetta. Is he any good? No. All right. Um, we might look at my shortlist here first. So let's have a look at my shortlist. So I've put a few guys on there that I, I, I liked the look of, shall we say. Um, but not all of them are actually in regions where we wouldn't pay for travel. So obviously Corey Underwood's in there. Do we go for Desert Storm and do we start? I mean, he's also based in Kansai. Very annoying, very annoying. These these tours are killing us. One BCG tour, and that was three months ago. And we're only starting to profit now, so it's 
It's not looking good. We could go for this guy. He does have very low stamina, but um, I was recently told by Question the Mark that you can actually, like, I don't know, taunt. You can essentially taunt your workers into, like, working on their stamina. He's got such good entertainment skills and star quality, albeit a, a, lot, a lot of the rest of his game is not great. He's only 20, though, so I'm assuming he would be, he would be trained pretty well. Uh, Hammer Hadley is another one that we could bring in, but he has a prickly personality, which I believe is it's another bad personality. Um, he would be perfect, though. I, I, I want to bring this guy in, and we will, uh, but I was going to wait until small size. Uh, and essentially lock him down to a, uh, an exclusive written contract because he will be be that good. He does have 82 toughness, though, which that could be very, very beneficial for us with our backstage. The, the prickly personality, I don't know if that actually plays into the inner circle. Um, it's not locker room leader. It's the other one, uh, whatever the other one is. I keep, I keep forgetting what they are. They're, they're very similar, but yeah, eh, I don't know. We could go for Mark Smart. I, I, I did have him shortlisted. He is quite good. He's, he's not incredible, but 68 basics. He's got a little bit of flashiness about him. Good, good little technical high flyer. Uh, 57 psychology. He'd probably have ring rust as well. You know, assume that he hasn't been working. He had one tour there for Burning Hammer. That was back in February. So, yeah, it was quite a while. Uh, Casino is one that's been working quite a lot recently, and I've talked about him a fair bit. Um, we might go for Casino because I know for a fact he's been working, and he's only 40 per show. Or do we go? Do we splash a little bit of cash, guys? Do we do it? Aussie Goldstein, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm actually tempted to do it, purely for the fact that if we if we get rid of Al Coleman. Goldstein can literally, he can jump straight in. He does have an unpredictable personality, which I think is, I think that's a middle one, but it can sway either way. He can either be like a negative personality or he can be a positive. I'm very tempted. I'm very, very tempted. He He's going to cost us a little bit. I might be able to get that down to like 75 potentially. I think we'd do it. Sandman, Winks, I really want to bring him in, but we, we're going to have to wait a little while till we gain a little bit more, a little bit more, um, a little bit more profit, sorry. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't work out what I wanted to say there. Uh, profit per month, so we can uh, pay for travel costs. Cavalero, he's a very good young worker. Um, can definitely turn into to a great star. Um, driven personality, which I think is primarily a positive one. Uh, you got Patton as well. He's based in Ontario, so it's, you know, these, these guys, they're guys I'm familiar with. Um, they're on the short list, but we're not even really thinking about bringing them in at the moment. Uh, we do have this guy, though, Ultimate Phoenix Jr., rookie luchador. I looked at him. I don't want to bring in too many luchadors. We've already got two of them, so it's like, eh. He's based in the Southwest. He has a prof professional personality as well. Um, very much a similar mold to, to Ultimate Dragon. Uh, and then Warpiece. Warpiece is still there. Tri-State, people, person. I want to sign him 100%. He's only going to be 30 per show. Do we, do we just take the... The travel costs for for war piece because he is going to be such a good worker. I think we might just do it. We might just bite the bullet. Yeah, because because some of these are bad. Like Wild Red Stallion's got professional, which is good. Um, People person's a very good personality type. Could go Ultimate Phoenix as well. Just looking through a few of these guys. Obviously, some of them we can't even really try and sign. I'm almost tempted just to go for Goldstein and Warpiece at the moment. I wonder if I can have a chat here with, um, with Desert Storm and if he can come and... 
Ähm, I guess we, we have to hire him first before we can even ask him. Nah, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to come closer to to where we're based. Um, that's fine. I guess it is what it is. Yeah. See, so he 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 will want to be covered for travel. I wonder if I can go like that. Drop that down and then go not covered. I wonder if I can bump. Can I bump that up to like fifty, for example, and actually get him in? Nah, uh, it's not going to work. Alrighty. Uh, with that said, let's go for Goldstein. Uh, we'll try and get him down to. We'll try seventy first. He's going to want travel cover. He's in the tri-state. Ah, oh, that. I didn't see that before. Okay, disregard that. Uh, we're going to go war piece. He's also in the tri-state, but. He doesn't actually work for anyone at the moment, so I'm thinking we we might be able to convince him to come to us. So let's go 20. Um, you guys also mentioned that you can do written contracts per show as well. I think for him, we might actually do a written contract because he's having tours with Burning Hammer. Uh, and we don't have to pay travel there either. Is that, is that legitimate? Or did I change that? I don't even know. I don't even know what I changed there. Um, let's go with two-year two year contract. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll try and get that to zero. Everything except how shows. We'll try for 20 as well. Okay, so he wants to travel cover. All right, he wants higher merchandise. We'll give him 5%. Will he take 20? He wants even more merchandise, okay. He'll take 20. He'll take 20 per week for two years with a, a written paper appearance deal. He'll still be able to work for Burning Hammer, but he won't actually be able to, according to, to the comments section, ask for pay rises. So this could be a very good contract, although we're taking a bit of a big risk with the uh, his travel from New York covered but I'm going to do it. War Peace is coming into the company. Um, we might even be able to do a little stable with him as the uh, as the leader. He's got a reverse dragon suplex as well, so could be a pretty pretty decent link up there with Blue Dragon potentially. Um, and I don't think anyone else is in our region. I'm going to talk to. I might. I'm going to wait for Wild Red Stallions tour. The finish. Um, so I'll wait for his tour to finish, and then I want to talk to him and see if we can convince him to essentially work in our region because I can't be paying people to come from 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 Japan to the US. It, it's going to cost us way too much money. Anyway, let's uh, let's advance about a week, and uh, we shall see if. We do indeed get War Piece on that contract. $20 per appearance. Very good. And essentially what, what that's going to do is it's going to allow, you know, the extra $10 that we would spend anyway for a $30, $30 appearance. It's going to allow us to then spend that extra 10 bucks plus whatever else cost-wise to pay for his travel so beneficial um and then again we're also i guess kind of saving ourselves money because he's pretty much guaranteed to probably gain enough popularity as a result of those japanese tours that he'll come back to us and uh, ask for those pay rises so like i said hopefully the the advice from the comment section is legitimate and we won't have to worry at least for the next two years for War Piece as uh, we make our first signing here of the episode. I want to make another one. I want to bring in two people. So what we're going to do, well, we are bringing in two people. We've got the silencer as well. Uh, so War Piece is going to be a face. So I'll probably bring silencer in as a heel then, I think. He, he is actually better as a heel. 
Um, and it's been less than three months since he left RMW. Uh, Sansa has the option of restoring his old Rogue Special Forces gimmick. That is awesome. That must, I, I think that, is that a new feature? I don't know if I've ever done that before. Had someone come in as a, a one night only worker and signed him within three months. So he actually keeps his very good gimmick. That is huge. And we, we keep that pro. Um, and also losses do not hurt his momentum as much as usual. That, that did not, <laughs> that by itself is massive. Because he's probably going to be losing quite a bit, uh, at least in the start here. And it's a very marketable gimmick. So we're going to apply that one 100%. Uh, is Warpiece, is he actually a better heal? Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't say. So uh, we'll bring him in as a face. Yeah, there we go. All right. Perfect. There's our two new workers. We, we might go for one more. I don't know. Um, or we will just wait for, for Wild Red Stallion, which I think is probably what we're going to do. Anyway. Let's uh let's skip forward here to the next show. We're gonna get both those guys on the on the card making their their proper debuts for for silencer anyway. Uh, we do need to remember that he is still technically under ring rust, so it, it's gonna take a few more shows probably. But it didn't take um, Patriot very long, so I'm assuming it's probably not gonna take uh, silencer very long either. And I'm happy with that. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to skip forward through the processing and join you guys back once we finish. Alrighty, so let's get into it. What do we got here? Uh, Alright, so Red Stallion's gone. He's finished his tour with BCG. Uh, that was the 18th, so that was a week ago. Back in the Midwest. Okay. I wonder if their tours, if they essentially get put into that region while the tour is going on, like their base there for the tour, which would make sense because obviously if you're touring a, a Japanese company, you're going to live in Japan for the entirety of that tour, uh, which I know a lot of Australians have done in the past. So that's going to allow us not to pay travel cover. So we're also going to sign Wild Red Stallion. Uh, well, we're going to try and sign him this episode. He He won't actually come. Uh, until the start of next episode anyway. So, uh, well, he, he won't actually make his debut till next episode. We'll, we'll sign him for this one. But anyway, uh, I think with him, we will do the same type of contract, to be honest. Uh, we'll go two years. We'll go 20 per show. Uh, everything except house shows and then 5%. He wants higher. Okay. 10% and he'll he'll take it. $20 per appearance. That's ridiculous uh, for a worker of his quality as well. I know he's got very low psychology, but you look at this side, the fundamental and physical, incredible. He's got 86 toughness as well. So he could be, he could be part of our inner circle. Uh, he's also got 71 star quality, you know, passable entertainment skills as well. Um, looking very good. Experience is obviously very, very low as well. He's only 22. So there we go. Wild Red Stallion coming in. Perfect fit here for Rocky Mountain Wrestling as well. Uh, you'd love to see it. So we're not paying travel for him. We've locked him down. And he's also only on 20 per week. Uh, 20 per show, sorry. Incredibly good. That is perfection. Um, I'm very happy that he, you know, they're not stuck in Japan, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, very happy. Very happy indeed. Let's get into it. What event is it? We've got Battle in the Asylum. Oh, that's our tournament. I didn't even know it was coming. I honestly had no idea. Interesting. So our current... I wonder if we, wonder if we make a title for this as well. Um, so RMW. Let's go RMW. Battle in... Whoop. Make sure I spell it correctly. Battle in the Asylum. Um, do we call it that or do we go with a different name? Hmm. Maybe I'll ask you guys for a suggestion. What do you suggest we make the uh, Battle in the Asylum tournament? It's a tournament title, essentially. Uh, what do you think we call it?
Um, we'll call it Battle in the Asylum, and I want I want you guys to su to suggest something. I want to have creative input from the comments section down below. So I'll go Battle in the Asylum for now. Uh, we won't put a little a title there. We can, but uh, it's going to be a primary. It's going to be an annual competition uh, tournament. Held at, where is it? Battle in the Asylum. Uh, title is retained. So we're going to leave that off because the title is not retained after victory. We're going to have a new champion, a new tournament winner every year. Singles, yep, that's all perfect. Battle in the Asylum. So we now have a, a proper level tournament champion, essentially. Uh, I guess in a way similar to, if I go to TCW... Uh, in here, whoops, wrong one. Uh, PCW, you go to their titles. They have the King of Kings. So it's essentially a title. It's a tournament title that they can win, um, and it's annually at King of Kings. So exactly the same thing. We're sort of ripping off their idea a little bit, uh, but that's that's what wrestling is. So not going to worry about it too much, uh, and let's get into it. So I guess realistically, we're going to have the debut. Or not the debut, the uh well yeah, the debut of War Peace and the re-debut of the Silencer uh in our tournament here for Battle in the Asylum 2023. Um what I might do is I might actually give Coleman the night off. Yeah, I'm gonna give him the night off. Um so we're not gonna be able to praise him, which is fine, but we won't pay for him either. So give him the night off. I don't know if it actually helps their morale issues as well, but I have no idea. Uh, this one I'm going to go with a creative finish, and it's going to be for Jules Knight, likely to succeed. Interesting. Oops, I spelled succeed wrong. Double C. There we go. Oop. There we go. Do we do we give it to Jules Knight after the the performance last episode as well, our highest ever rated show and rated match? I don't know. Anyway, we, we did get the night off to, to Al Coleman, so we're not actually going to get a, a negative in, incident as a result, which is very, very good. Uh, and we have four students now for American Patriot as well. War Peace is actually one of the, the new students there uh, for his basics and safety. So that's really good. Happy with that. Uh, and then it's Remy Sky. If, if, if it's not Al Coleman, it's going to be Remy Dam Sky. <sighs> Come on, man. Uh, Remy turned up very late, breaking locker room uh, rules. We're just going to give him a, a slap on the wrist. Actually gives him a small negative impact. Maybe I should have gone a little bit more harsh. I don't know. It is what it is. We'll address the locker room. Let's go with uh, let's go with team bonding. Because we have no Al Coleman backstage. So, and as you can see, it's all strengthened. There is uh, no negatives there, which is good. Uh, and let's get into it. So the tournament is actually going to be relatively cheap for us. Uh, so let's think about the eight workers that we're going to use. So first match. Let us have American Patriot versus Jack Pride. I don't actually know who I want to be the winner yet. Uh, so eight minutes for that one. I think I'm going to go with Jack Pride. So open script, tainted, cheating to win. Um, and we'll keep him simple as well. Let me take a look at him real quick. So still 56. Was he 55 or was he 56? I can't remember. Last episode. Uh, safety. He was 55. Okay, that's really good. So he's up to 56. Almost there. Once he gets to 60, I'll probably never keep him simple ever again. So he's almost there. Hopefully with the, the two matches on this card, he'll actually be able to get there. Uh, so Jack Pride. Uh, we're going to go War Peace versus maybe a Jerry Pepper. Yeah, War Peace versus Jerry Pepper. I like that. Eight minutes. Um, we'll give the win to War Peace. He's going to go on a nice little run too. Uh, we'll script and decisive that one as well. So nice little debut there for for War Peace. That can go second. 
Uh, third first round match is going to be... So Blue Dragon's technically already the, the number one contender. So next episode, he'll, he'll verse Al Coleman in the main event of the Climb Show. And then the winner of this tournament will verse the winner of that match at the end of month show as well. Uh, let's go with Remy. Um, 30 pop. What's Montero's? 26. All right, so Remy Sky versus The Silencer, making his re-debut. Uh, we'll go eight minutes for that one as well. Remy Sky getting the win. I like that too. That'll go down the bottom. Uh, and then the final first round match is going to be... Uh, do we... Yeah, let's do this. We'll go Montero versus Jules Knight. Should be a really good match for a first round. And then the winner of this one is going to be Montero. Cool. I like it. Uh, for this one, we shall go with American Patriots, up to 69 pop uh, psychology, almost said popularity, uh, psychology. So that'll go down the bottom. And then our semifinals, or I guess second round, they're semifinals, essentially. Uh, let's have, it is going to be Jack Pride taking on Jack Pride Warpiece. Is that what I'm doing? Yes. Interesting match. Uh, but yeah, Jack Pride versus War Peace. Got eight minutes for that one as well. War Peace getting the victory over a Jack Pride. Uh, hopefully boosting up his popularity quite a bit. Hopefully this show will just elevate him quite a lot because he uh, he's essentially going to make it to the final. Um, he might even win it. We'll have to wait and see how I decide to book it. Uh, the second match is Remy Sky versus Roger Montero, isn't it? So, big semi-final. You could say that this semi-final should probably be the uh, the actual final of the uh, of the show. So, I got eight minutes for that one as well. And Roger Montero is going to pick up the victory in a nice, clean victory as well. So, once again, we'll get American Patriot there. The road agent that one and then that'll be our second semi oops where did i go yep perfect uh which essentially means the final is going to be war piece taken on roger montero and uh we'll give this one 20. what's their stamina like oh 95 for war piece are you kidding me that's ridiculous and then 76. Yeah, I mean, Montero could struggle, but we'll, uh, we're going to give it to him anyway. So he's going to win the first ever, well, technically the second ever Battle in the Asylum tournament. But this, this will be the first one with an actual title attached to it. So script will slow build and we'll make it clean as well. Uh, and that'll mean staff. Once again, American Patriot. Uh, and then titles. Battle in the Asylum. There we go. And that is our main event. Perfect. Uh, we're up to 82 minutes, so we'll chuck in two little angles there. Uh, I'll chuck in a Roger angle. Roger onto War Piece. That. Onto War Piece. Um, Ontario praises an amazing run to the final by War Piece. Um, but states he doesn't know uh, what he's up against. We'll, uh, we'll finish that in a second here. Doesn't know what he's up against. when it comes to beating the heavyweight champ. Champion, oop, Al Coleman. 
Roger believes it is his destiny to win this tournament and go on to win the RMW title. Cool. Decent little promo there coming from, from Roger Montero. That'll be pre-main event. Uh, I think then from that, can I maybe give Warpiece an angle? Negative. He has bad entertainment skills. Um, in that case, what we'll do here is let's go a pre-match beatdown by Primetime Jack Pride onto Warpiece. Ooh. Maybe another saving the day, actually. That works out better. Let's go War Piece there, go none there, and then American Patriot will come out because Jack Pride and Patriot were supposed to verse each other on this show. So that works out really, really well. Um Pride attacks the debuting War Piece pre match. We get the upper hand. Patriot runs out and stops the beatdown. We'll, uh, we'll fix that up in a second as well. Uh, so do that. Angle, yep. Scripted. We're going to give this one four minutes as well. Um, Patriot runs out and stops the beatdown. Getting in Pride's face and challenges him to a match on the climb next week. Cool. Very nice. A little bit of our storyline progression there as well with uh, Primetime Jack Pride and American Patriot. So that'll go, yep, that'll go perfect before the semifinals. And we're pretty much ready to go. We're at 91% as well. Uh, apparently Warpiece is being used far too much, but that's perfectly fine. Um, because I want to I want to push him pretty hard from the get-go. So there we go. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's run the show. Alright, so we kick things off with a 41 rated singles first round match. They're all singles matches. Uh, we have Primetime Jack Pride defeating American Patriot in 812 by pinfall after using a foreign object and again this randomly drawn first round match uh puts uh patriot versus jack pride we're gonna do a rematch on the climb as well after the angle takes place yeah 41 rated good match you know steel chair again with uh jack pride taking it to patriot this time cheating to win to advance in the tournament we then go into a 35 rated match where we have the debuting war piece he defeats Jerry Pepper in 8.22 by pinfall. I wonder why his finishes aren't in there. Interesting. We might have to fix that up. Uh, gimmick, he got an initial rating of adequate. Uh, small penalty to microphone. That doesn't matter. He's he's realistically not going to be using any type of, uh, you know, promo skills. As he's got like 30s. So we won't worry about that too much. Uh, only with a 25 in-ring, uh, but he, does, he doesn't have any popularity, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, but does get a big win here over Jerry Pepper in the first round. We then go into a 42-rated match here in the first round. we got Remy Sky defeating the Silencer, of course making his proper debut here in RMW in 8.22 by pinfall with a Skydiver. And then once again, Silencer was rusty. Still, a 42 is a pretty good match, so I'm happy with that. Um, Silencer knocked out, Remy Sky advancing. And then the final first round match, we get a 53 rating for this one. Knew it was going to be pretty good. But we have Roger Montero defeating Jules Knight in 7.53 by pinfall with an eagle chop. Yeah, 50 in ring from Montero, 48 there from Jules Knight, and a 53 to finish off the first round. All right, we then move into a 29 rated angle where we have Jack Pride attacking the debuting war piece 
uh, before the first semi-final match here to get the upper hand. And of course, we have uh, Jack Pride's, I guess, rival at the moment, American Patriot. He runs out and stops the beat down, getting in Pride's face, challenging him to a match on the climb for next week. So uh, a bit of a rematch from tonight's first round. Good stuff. And uh, another save by Patriot, this time for Warpiece. So possible alliance there maybe as well. Could be brewing. Have to wait and see. Anyway, our first semi-final, we get a 32 rating. Where we have Warpiece defeating Primetime Jack Pride in 732 by submission. So pinfall victory there for Warpiece and now a submission victory. Uh, Jack Pride was really off his game. Unfortunate. Um, and then, yeah, 30 in ring there for Pride and a 29 for Warpiece. Good stuff. Uh, dirt Sheet, just inconsistency and inexperience for both of them. So, yeah, good match. Jack Pride off his game. And uh, we move into our second semi final, which does very well. We get a 53 rated semi final two here. Got Roger Montero, maybe pulling off a bit of an upset, defeating Remy Sky in 757 by pinfall with another eagle chop. And yeah, Remy Sky was really off his game, so I'm kind of happy about that. Only getting a 44 in ring to Montero's 54. Uh, and again, both these guys have great chemistry together, so it made for a, a good match. Uh, dirt sheet, obviously the face-face combination, physical condition, inconsistency there as well for Remy. Uh, but yeah, good, really good match for... I think we, do we get a 53 for the Montero first round match? I think we did. I think we did. Anyway, we move on to another angle. We get a 38 rated angle, this one for Montero. Um, he basically pre-match gets on the microphone and praises the amazing run to the final from Warpiece, uh, but states that he doesn't know what he's up against when it comes to beating the heavyweight champion, Al Coleman. And Roger Montero believes it is his destiny to win the Battle in the Asylum tournament and go on to win the RMW heavyweight title next month. He's got it all to do against a, a young up-and-comer in War Peace. The main event, what do we get? Hopefully a 50. A 50 would be really good uh, purely for War Peace's uh, popularity he's got at the moment. It's not as good. We only get a 41 rated main event here. I knew it wasn't going to be very good, but the reasoning why I've done it this way and had Warpiece make it to the final is so, you know, he'll go from two popularity, hopefully up to about 15, 16. That's my thought process anyway. So we get a 41 rated main event with Roger Montero defeating Warpiece in 20 minutes and two seconds by pinfall with an eagle chop. And we have Roger Montero winning the RMW Battle in the Asylum title, winning his first tournament here in the company. And he will get his opportunity next month against whoever is the heavyweight champion at the time. Likely going to be Al Coleman, but Blue Dragon does have an opportunity on the climb as he finds himself as the number one contender. So good stuff. We'll finish the show. Uh, we get a 43. Which is a it's it's an okay. We've been getting about forty fives and above at the moment, but that main event being a forty one is is the reason why this has dropped so much. So it's unfortunate, but it doesn't matter anyway because I mean it wouldn't matter anyway even if we could still gain popularity, but we we don't gain anything as a result of this uh, this ticketed show. So yeah, good stuff. We just gain profit, which is very very important. Uh, who are we going to praise? Uh, I'm going to praise Roger, uh, and I think I'm going to praise I'm going to praise Warpiece as well. Yeah, we'll go both those guys. Financial report. Wow, we made eighty dollars as a result of the show. That doesn't even factor in sponsorship or anything. We profited purely from the show. Obviously, the, the worker costs are a lot lower than they would normally be. Uh, essentially, that's because we've used the same eight workers throughout the whole show. No tag matches, nothing. Um, that's really good. That's really, really solid. Um, 80 profit from just a show by itself. 
I don't we have we haven't seen that actually. We haven't seen a profit in one of those uh show cost breakdowns. So that's our first one for the series. I'm very happy with that. Anyway, let's uh let's advance a few days here. I want to check popularity real quick. Actually, let's advance first. So five days, we'll go five days forward into into July. And I guess essentially this um the climb show could essentially be the fourth of July sort of extravaganza show, although it's probably not gonna be on the fourth of July. Um maybe it will, I have no idea. Anyway, Wild Red Stallion there, he's coming in. Uh he's gonna be a face. Yeah, so coming in as a face, he'll uh, he'll do some good work. I think I I, I might want to pin him in a tag team with um, Roger Montero. Um, so we'll, we'll try and I guess build towards them linking up. Uh, we still got a few more days to do, so let's advance again. Four more days. He pretty much came in straight away. Hopefully his gimmick will be be good as well. If, if we don't get a good gimmick on him, we might be in a bit of strife. I'm going to leave it default. Or I might, actually, I, might, I might try a gimmick idea potentially as well. I don't, do you use the gimmick ideas? I don't know if you use them prior to debuting or if you use them after they de debuted. I honestly can't remember, so... I guess we'll find out next episode. <laughs> a lot of a lot of testing going on in this series, which is what you'd expect coming from a from a local to global uh, on a brand new game as well. I um, just want to give a shout out. This game is it's it's a lot more in detail. I feel like compared to the twenty twenty. Uh, I think Great Oaks Software have done a, a really good job there, and uh, I, I'm honestly having an absolute blast playing again. Um, I, I feel like I feel like I did when 2020 first dropped, and I did the the original local to global. Um, obviously, that that came a few months after um, after release the local to global series. Whereas this one, I've, I've literally made it my first series because I know how much fun I'll actually have with it. So. Get through the uh, the processing here. All right, so we've actually got the uh, six-month awards or the, the mid-year awards. So Jenna Montero's male company is CWA. Uh, female going to female tag team, uh, going to the team of Alicia Strong and Alina America. Uh, males going to Cam Jones and Sid Collier. Match of the Year, US Pro, Show of the Year, going to CWA, Wrestle Fest. Uh, female young worker Lucy Stone McFly, male young wrestler going to Will Beaumont. Interesting, the, the Aussie. Very good stuff. Love to see it. Uh, female veteran going to Nina Kasache again. Male veteran going to Axis Jr. That's a bit of an interesting one. Who's he working for? Still with EIWL. Okay. Uh, female wrestler of the year going to Amber Allen. Okay. And then male independent going to Marcos Caballero. Um, interesting. Hmm, okay. The amazing Caballero bros. Uh, apparently one half of them is the uh, male independent of the year so far. Anyway, we made $802 as a result of that show. That is huge. We're nearly at $1,000 per show, like per month, sorry. If we can make $1,000 per month, I mean, that's... We're easily, easily going to make... Make us all re reduce our debt to zero before the three years has passed, so... Well on track, well on track. Um, so we're not going to... We're not going to reduce anything. We're literally just going to keep things how they are. Keep progressing. We're actually paying $42 in tax as well. That's interesting. Um, yeah, let's take a look at some popularity. So I want to look at War Piece. 
He's up to 12. Okay, so it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, but that's a decent little little push there as well. I might try and look at the uh, editor uh, between episodes and just see if we can... He's got these finishing moves up here. Um, but he's not actually using them as his finishes in the game. So maybe a, a little bit of oversight there. Uh, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, let's look at Montero, because he did win. He's up to 30 popularity now. That's four points. Four points in a month as a result of winning the uh, the tournament title there. That is huge. I mean, Coleman's only on 33, so there's three points of popularity difference between those two. Um, and then Hangman's on 37. Somehow he just he keeps growing. I don't know. He, he's unreal. Absolutely unreal. Anyway. Uh, what I just noticed there is he's actually got 78 Menace as well. So he could essentially run some uh, Intimidation Angles. Could, uh, could Hangman. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. Good stuff from everyone. Jack Pry, what, what's his popularity looking like? 14. Um, he was at 17 at one point. So that's interesting. He was, he was actually at 17 uh, last month. And then obviously took the loss to War Peace. But... We, we should be able to get him back up there anyway, so I'm very happy with the way things are. Yeah, lots of good popularity. Remy Sky is still at 29. He's been at 29 uh, for quite a while. And yeah, the Climb 8 is tomorrow night, so that'll be next episode. And again, we are 13 popularity, four points away from reaching tiny size. That is massive. If you enjoyed the episode today, guys, drop a like on the uh, on the video here. And subscribe to the channel as well. You can see the uh, the little watermark down in the, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or scroll down and uh, hit that sub button. And you'll be, be notified if you hit the, uh, the little bell notification thing next to it. You'll be notified when these episodes come out. So they're coming out every day, same time. Make sure you tune in. Um, and apart from that, as always, take it easy and goodbye.